Hello and welcome to Sovereign RPG. I am Sovereign. I have just woken up and today we are going to be talking about Myth of Empires. Now I've been asked several times in my actual Discord on the Suggestions channel to make videos on the patch notes, go over some of the changes, what the differences involved in it, how it will affect you while you're playing. If you are interested in seeing more videos like these for the more important updates, not every single update considering there's a patch note every day, but if there's a really important part of a patch note, I will do a video on it. Make sure to like the video if you'd like to see this more so let's get into the patch notes for this evening this will be up after the downtime i'm currently recording during the downtime at 20 past midnight because i don't know how to sleep and when to sleep at proper time so let's have a quick look over these patch notes they've up they've optimized the long loading of the game so if you had a lot longer loading times if you had a less speedy pc it did take quite a few times for me it, even for my pc it does take quite a long time to load game so I'm hoping this actually fixes that. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I can actually just go put a kettle on while the loading screen is happening. So it's not that bad. They fixed some issues related to the NPC auto navigation function. Now I'm hoping this is the stairs. You know, you know those stairs that sort of go up and up like this and they go up and around. I'm hoping that they fixed the path of that because I haven't been able to get NPCs up our stairs in our base to be able to stick them on the actual crafting station. So it's been a bit of a nightmare. Hopefully that is a fix for that. They fixed the password authentication error for a few players logging into the game. They say a few players, so I'm guessing they haven't fixed it for everyone. I'm hoping they can get this like out of the way really quickly. They've optimized the auto snap function. That's going to be something that I'm going to have to look at. Uh, in game i don't see i personally don't know what the issue is with the auto snap function it seems to be working fine with me i mean it's really ridiculously hard to get stuff through the floor sometimes but that's likely to help with not being able to mesh so people don't go under the ground and get inside of your base without having to break down any walls or anything like that and they've optimized the performance of cheval de fils now i'm pretty sure that's coaching when you're running on the horse and you stab someone i'm pretty sure that that that's what that is i mean i'd have to actually go on to google to have a look what that is but i'm pretty sure that's what it is they've optimized the bounding point of some buildings now hopefully this is the boulder walls because if you do a t-shape off of a straight and you actually have it it's sort of a little bit off center so when you're going around to do the second area of your boulder gate area it doesn't actually fit on one side so i'm hoping that it is the binding point of the actual boulders that are fixed so we can get that closed off we got like a gap that someone can run through in the walls and it's an and we just had we just broke it down because there's no point in having those bloody boulder walls there if there's a big hole in it number seven is only being able to remove items from the fair in the county that it is in that is the actual hundred man server that you're going to be on before you could actually go in there and put stuff on the fair go to a different server and pull it off the fair and it will be on that server which is kind of it's, it's pretty much an exploit for anyone that was doing that so they've fixed that so you can't actually do it anymore they've changed it to where each page will show 10 fairs instead of 18 they fixed some bugs related to the daily quests they fixed some bugs causing a notification of too close to the enemy building when placing a big animal pen this can go either way you can use it to sort of grief other players if you're building too close to other people actual bases you can just surround them with big animal pens that would be an absolute nightmare they've optimized the riding position of elephant and rhino i haven't even tried properly to tame a rhino or elephant yet now i have got obedience up by throwing food in front of it and i wasn't able to get the obedience up when actually knocking them out and trying to feed them but there's a that, but I've been told that if you put them in a giant animal cage and you knock them out while they're in the animal cage, you can then feed them and their obedience goes up. That's something I'll have to do some testing on. And as soon as I know the actual answer to that, I'll make a video on it. So now the crafting materials required for the wooden defensive wall, wooden gate, wooden gateways increased by three times because it's this. It was ridiculously easy to make those things. The wood buildings are very easy to make. But on the flip side, they're very easy to break down. So it doesn't really matter if they cost more or less. Like it's just the, either way, you'll be able to get through them. They fix some bugs causing the abnormal display of rubble in southwestern mountain they fix some bugs causing floating in the air and abnormal displays in some terrains so hopefully when you destroy a building now you won't have half your players up in the sky and when they log in they fall to their death hopefully that's a fix for that and they fix the abnormal display of boundary markers durability now some people have said and this happened to us as well your boundary marker has less hp than it actually has so it's showing it has less but it has more so that's just a standard little fix there now number 16 is the big 
big bad boy, the one we actually want to talk about. You don't need to assign warriors to watchtowers anymore. Watchtowers are the actual siege buildings you can put up on your walls or outside your base or stick it up on a one by one and you used to have to put an NPC in it and ammo and that it, and the damage of the arrows will go off of the siege of the NPC. Now the player that actually places them, that is the variable that is used for how much damage they do. So if a person has 600 siege in your guild and they're placing these towers down, the damage of that siege tower will always be based on that player's siege skill level. Now we don't know if it's when as it's placed what their siege skill is. So when they place it, it will be that forever, even if they upgrade the skill or if the skill upgrades with them. That'll be something that has to be doing some testing with. Now, this could be a bad thing because you could spam these towers all over the place and they could just be raining bolts down on the world. We'll have to see if they're going to add a limit in there. This is quite a major change because it was limiting a lot of players from being able to build this because of the how many NPCs you can actually have. You can only have 10 with maximum levels in command and recruitment. It's just basically that's all you could have was 10 NPCs. And if you have 10 NPCs and you can't put them on stations, and stuff that limit was quite holding back on the crafting putting people you either chose to put them on crafting stations or you chose to put them in towers so it's an interesting change to help the smaller guys but it's also going to be a nightmare change if they don't have a like a hard cap on the amount of towers for the bigger guild so we'll have to see how that goes once it actually launches they fixed a situation where the weight of untamed warriors on the cart won't be counted into the carry weight so we were able to fill up warriors maximum amounts of weight and stick them on the cart there is still a way you can just fill up a horse or two horses full up overweight and like sort of run them on top of the cart then fill them up overweight and then you can ride down the road with two horses on the back of the cart and the weight is unaffected that's still a thing but they fixed the one where you can just overburden npcs and have them sit on the cart they adjusted the world level of all battle servers to level 20 now i'm not 100 sure what that means i'm guessing that's going to be the instance battles when you're fighting for magistrate and stuff i'm not sure why that that would have been an issue if it was higher rank maybe because you got like loads of xp from doing it or something or other and people were trading magistrate fights etc that could have been a thing but i haven't heard anything personally on any exploit that was used with the battle servers and that's basically everything we have for this day's maintenance normally it'll be this week's maintenance this month's maintenance but these guys are just pumping out these updates every day they're workhorses and they're getting stuff fixed that need to be fixed quickly getting rid of exploits as soon as they're found they're really caring about how the game turns out and the game is only growing and growing and growing so it's a good thing to see and that's all we have for today i want to thank you all for watching if you want to continue to get these sort of updates for the big changes if they do come to the game like uh, patch notes of a big change like the no npcs needing them watch towers anymore then please throw up a like and let me know down in the comment i want to thank you all for watching fly safe avoid local chat scams